Good morning. Happy Monday. Uh, I'm traveling today. And since I was on the road, I figured that this would be a great chance for me to throw out some tips for everybody on how to make the most of your travel. Um, and I'll touch a little bit on leisure travel. And then I'll also touch on some things for those of you who travel frequently for business. Um, so first off, let's just start at the beginning of the day. When you wake, you want to make sure that you are drinking a 12 ounce glass of water and getting up and moving your body a little bit. So for those of you that travel for business, make sure that you're not just snoozing all, snoozing your alarm all morning long and then rushing out of bed straight to meetings. Give yourself about 15 or 20 minutes just to move some blood around your body. You will be absolutely amazed at the energy that you feel and just the really awesome mindset that it'll put you in to start the day. Um, and as long as we're talking about drinking water, let me just stress the importance of staying hydrated. So water consumption, you want to make sure that you are drinking at bare minimum half your body weight in ounces each day. Now, when you travel, especially air travel, you will have a tendency to dehydrate. So you want to make sure that you're getting even above and beyond that half body weight in ounces per day. Um, and then this one seems so basic, but I can't stress the importance of it enough. And that is to keep your gut healthy. You want to make sure that you are adequately chewing your food. So especially when we're traveling and if you're socializing, we'll have a tendency to take a bite, chomp just enough for us to barely break it down and then swallow. Well, we know that staying healthy and keeping our gut in optimal shape requires proper digestion and adequate absorption of the nutrients that we're consuming. And so it has to start just right here and chew your food really, really well. Um, so now that we're up and we've drank some water and we've moved our body a little bit, the next really important piece is to make sure that you are eating breakfast. So if you're a business traveler and you go straight into your meetings just with coffee, I promise you, you are not taking away everything you can and you are not able to give your best when you are just fueled on coffee. So a small breakfast will do. But make sure that that breakfast consists of a healthy protein and a lot of good healthy fat. Skip the carbohydrates first thing in the morning because when we consume those carbs first thing when we wake up, what happens is it just elevates our blood sugar. And then about two hours later, we just feel hungry and a little bit dissatisfied. Not to mention that our energy levels start to tank. So breakfast should consist of a healthy protein, and a healthy fat. Now, if you're saying, okay, well, I'm a business traveler, and how am I supposed to get that? Most business class hotels will have um, hard-boiled eggs available. So even if it's just a hard-boiled egg or two and a little pack of nuts, that's an ideal just grab-and-go for you business travelers. If you're leisurely traveling, then you have an assortment of awesome foods to eat, that if you stick to protein and fat, you're not going to be limited. So an omelet, scrambled eggs with some ham, a side order of good quality bacon, a side order of avocado. Those are great ways to start the day. And this is going to help you maintain consistent energy throughout the day and then not feel tired and hungry about two hours later, um, which is really important when you're traveling, that you're not just splurging on unnecessary foods because you feel hungry the whole entire day. Okay. So protein and fat, first thing in the morning. Chew it adequately and make sure that you're drinking plenty of water. Okay. Um, so now let's move on throughout the day. Lunch, dinners. When you are eating at restaurants, there's a couple of just easy rules that I follow. Um, and first is going to be say no to the bread and say no to the chips on your table. Um, again, just a lot of unnecessary carbohydrates 
and highly inflammatory. And so for us, we just say, don't even bring the bread or the chips to the table. And that way we're not even tempted by it. But what we will do is we'll start our meal by ordering, ordering an appetizer that is just 100% protein. So good suggestions on that would be like a um, chicken or a beef satay or a meat skewer of some kind. Um, a shrimp cocktail is another good option. Meatballs would be another good option. So in order to avoid overindulging on carbohydrates when you first sit down, skip the bread and chips and go straight to a appetizer that consists solely of protein. Um, now when we're talking about entrees, you know, eating while you're traveling is just a matter of learning how to navigate any menu, no matter what restaurant you're at, and finding things that are going to help keep you on track and keep you healthy. So opt for a good healthy protein, lean protein, um, and then skip the fried foods. The problem with fried foods, especially when you're traveling, is... Oil is an ex good quality oil is very costly, and most restaurants do not use good quality oils like avocado oils or extra virgin olive oil or coconut oils. They're going to be frying things in highly inflammatory oils like canola oil. Um, so just skip the fried foods altogether. Um, and then if you're a business traveler and you have meetings late into the evening and then you're finding that you're not having dinner until later that night, you want to opt for a lighter dinner. So protein and fat is harder for our body to digest. And if we eat a big heavy steak or a lot of fatty foods late in the evening and then try to go to bed, what's going to happen is that's going to disrupt our sleep. So if you're eating later in the day, Make sure that you keep it a light meal, um, and then this would be your time to enjoy a little more carbohydrate. Now, I don't recommend consuming a big dessert, but opt to have your carbohydrate in the evening, whether it's a baked potato, some sweet potatoes, definitely a side of vegetables. Um, but keep the protein and fats lighter in the evening and up those carbs a little bit at dinner time. Um, and then lastly, it's just trying to make sure that you're staying on a good rhythm with your sleep schedule. Now, if you're leisurely traveling, this may not always be possible, and it's not the end of the world, right? Like, we're meant to enjoy our life, we're meant to enjoy our travels. But you will enjoy traveling so much more and feel better every day that you're on the road if you are getting adequate sleep. So trying to stay on a fairly good rhythm with your sleep schedule and your eat schedule. Um, and then if you're just traveling for leisure, like allow yourself to have that splurge, maybe a food that you at home would never consider having. For me, that was a, um, a we went to a place called Milk um, because it's Christina Toshi is her name. She's just got a cool story really neat success story. So I don't eat sweets, but I wanted to give her some business and just try out um, her desserts because I had just watched a series on Netflix called uh, Chef's Table where she was highlighted. So anyway, we went and had a cookie last night and it disrupted my sleep. But it's not the end of the world. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a three-day deload when I get home just to kind of help reset my system and get me right back on track. Okay. So allow yourself that splurge here and there, but also don't use travel as an excuse for just complete and utter free for all. Because the reality is when your gut feels good and you don't have indigestion and gas and disrupted bowel movements and your sleep is all over the place, when you aren't experiencing those things, I promise you travel is much more enjoyable. Um, and I think, and I'll leave you with this final note is that we need to change our mindset around what it means to be healthy. So many people think that being healthy is some way being deprived. And there just really isn't anything further from the truth. Those of us that are aware of how to take care of our body, 
eat good quality foods, get good sleep, stay hydrated, and then enjoy splurges in moderation, I promise you we're not deprived because we're the ones that aren't constantly sick, don't always feel like shit, and actually are going to be able to travel and do the things that we love to do for as long as we choose to do it. So keep that in mind. Wrap your mind around being healthy has nothing to do with being deprived. Um, So hopefully you got some helpful tidbits out of that. I always appreciate you tuning in with me. And we'll see you next Monday when I'll be back at home. Take care. Have a great week.